Good morning. How are you? Yeah, you're all right? Good. So, so glad to be with you. We're going to look at three different passages, then we're going to talk about them. So let's go to Genesis 3.11 first. Genesis 3.11. Okay, get there quickly. So let's see how fast you are with your Bible. Genesis is the first book of the Bible, just in case you didn't know. Genesis 3.11. Are you there yet? I'm waiting for everybody to look up. But that means you found it. Okay. Look what it says. And he said, who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Who said? Huh? God, right? God. God was speaking to Adam and Eve. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? All right. So basically he's posing a question, right? Who told you? In other words, who are you listening to? Somebody communicated to you something different than what I communicated to you. Uh, who was that? And who did you listen to? Because that person you listened to caused you to make a decision. Right? So every decision that we make uh, is based on information. We hear someone communicate to us, and then we make a decision. All right? So... Today's study is going to be about the influences that determine our decisions, right? And also, the decisions that you make have consequences. Would you agree? Yeah. All right. So let's go to Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Let's go there now. All right, Psalm 14 and verse 1. We're going to read the first six verses. All right, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All right, who, who said in their heart, what, what did they say? What, what did they say? What did the fool say? There's no God. So in other words, God's opinion of someone who says there's no God is that they are what? They're what? Say again, they're what? They're fool. They're fool. So God is looking as you're making decisions and if you decide at the end of the day that there's not a God, God's just going, well, you're a fool then. You're a fool. All right, let's continue reading. They are corrupt. That, that is, people in general, they are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there's any who understands, who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all the workers of iniquity not know who eat up my people? And they eat bread, and do they and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great dread. For God is with the righteous generation. You will put to shame the counsel of the afflicted, but the Lord is his refuge. All right. So basically what he's saying is that man, human beings, you and I, we are, there's nothing good in us. There's no, is someone here saved? Is someone here saved? Are you saved? Raise your hand if you're saved. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you're telling me you're not saved. All right. So you probably raise your hand whether you're saved or not. That's all right. Okay, but why are you saved? Why are you saved? Because you're good and, and everybody that's not in here now that's out there in the world doing whatever they want to do, are, are, are they out there because they're bad and you were good and you got saved? Why are you saved? Because God started drawing you to himself. Because he loved you. You do not see God, God saw you. There's nothing good in us. Right? And, and so... Uh, God wants you to understand, there's no one good, not even one. All of us are rotten in God's sight, and we need salvation. All right? So, now let's go to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. Now, I'm going to read, switching here, I'm going to read the New Living Translation. Anybody ever heard of that? Yes? I, I like that. It, it is a translation, it's not a paraphrase. You know what that means, right? Okay. So it is decent. 
In other words, some people say, well, how could you read that? It's not the Bible. It is the Bible. It's a translation. It just uses more modern words. Okay? So, uh, I, I'm not a heretic. Don't go tell your parents that I am, because we read from the New Living Translation. All right. Very good. Chapter uh, 1, and let's look at the first three verses. Mm, I'm sorry, I have these things in my mouth. I'm going to take them off in a minute. Uh, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. All right, so notice that again. All the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. All right, so well, here's what I want you to understand, that uh, all of us are, are being influenced by all kinds of information. Every one of us, including myself, we're constantly hearing different voices and, and authorities and, and, and opinions. And th this is what, what you, uh, I want you to understand today. Whoever you listen to, that, that is your God. That, that's who, who controls you. Because we all submit to someone and something. All right? So whoever you listen to, uh, that, that is who, who's controlling you. All right? Here, here's, here's the way it works, all right? When, when you're growing up, when you're growing up, you have several influences, right? Number one influence that you have when you're growing up is who? Your parents, right? Because you're little, they're raising you, and, and they're giving you information, and you're processing that information. You're saying, okay, I hear what you're saying, mom and dad, about certain things, and so they're in many ways, you know, telling us how to think and, and how to be, right? And, and so many people... Uh, as they're growing up and listening to the parents, they're like, you know, ah, oh, they're so dumb, they're so old-fashioned, I don't want to hear them, right? But hopefully you're listening to your parents because they're a gift from God, right? And, and, and your parents are, 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 if they're believers, they're telling you, you know, you have to believe in God, there is a God, you have to believe in the Word of God, the Word of God is trustworthy, and they're giving, and you're listening to all this information, right? Now, there, there's a second influence, and the second influence is church, right? Or conferences like this. You come to it and you listen and we're telling you, you have to believe the word of God. The word of God is true. You can trust it. And you're listening and you're processing information. All right? Now, just because you come to a conference, just because your parents are Christian, just because you're raised in church, uh, just because they told you to believe in God does not mean that you're born again. All right? I don't many... A, a young man and woman grew up like you, and they get to a certain age, and they walk away from the faith. They don't want to have anything to do with it. So I'm not assuming that you're saved just because you come into church or you go to conferences or whatever. Until you tell me I have been born again, this is my testimony, I'm not assuming you're saved. You, you've heard a lot of information. You can say Bible verses and Bible things, but that doesn't mean you are born again. Yeah. So, so you have the influence of the home, then you have the influence of church leaders. You you know you listen to your elders, uh, the Bible teachers, and all that, and you're listening. You're processing information, but that doesn't mean you believed it. it it's it's information that you're processing. Okay. So then we have a, a, another influence, and that is our culture. All right. So tell me a little bit about the culture today and what it's telling you. What is the culture saying today? What is the culture saying? Come on, don't be afraid to talk. And women can talk too. Ladies can talk in there. This is the youth meeting. All right? So, uh, what, what is the culture telling you? Follow your feelings. Okay, that, that's big today, isn't it? Follow your feelings. All right, what else? That's all they're saying? No. Y'all are you're, you're just hiding in your room and don't listen to the culture? That's good then. All right, so you're not being influenced by the culture. Yeah, that's all they say? Follow your feelings? Truth is relative. Okay, mean, which means what? That's a big word. It can mean different things to different people based on their background or culture or upbringing or whatever. That's right. And then here's another thing you're going to be hearing today. You can believe uh, in God the way you want to. I believe in God the way I want to. I'm not going to judge you, and you don't judge me. Right? Have you heard that one? All right. And so what else is our culture saying? I can't believe you haven't said it yet. What are they saying? The culture is saying that to be gay is okay, 
and, and to say that it's not okay is, is to be judgmental and, and, and to be a bigot and, and that's wrong. If I want to be that way, I'm going to be that way. As a matter of fact, they take it one step further. They say, when you're born, you need to decide if you're a man or a woman. That's what the culture's saying. Come on, you know what it is. Why haven't you said it? You, hasn't, you haven't heard that? Of course you have. You haven't heard it? Good. You're going to hear it sooner or later. But it, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. All right? So, and, and on top of that, we have another influence and what is it? What's the next influence? What's the next influence? It's right here. What's this called? It's a called a computer, right? And so you sit at home, and there's something called the internet, and the internet is in your computer. Yes or no? Is there someone here who does not have internet? No, everybody has internet, right? Of course you do. You've had it. When I grew up, there wasn't even computers around yet. There were not even phones. We had to go dial the phone, put a quarter, and dial. We had none of this, right? But what, what you do is that you sit down in your bedroom, in your wherever you, uh, where you're, where you're at, and you open up the computer, and you're on the Internet, and you're getting all kinds of what? Information given to you. All kinds of opinions. You're hearing about songs. You're hearing about how to dress. You're hearing about the gay, lesbian, BGT, BB, all these numbers, all these things that they keep adding, right? Uh, they're, they're talking about uh, that you, you, you believe whatever you want, and, and, and you're being attacked and, and told how to think from the Internet. In fact, uh, four or five hours a day, if I'm not mistaken, you are on the Internet and getting influenced and being uh, receiving processing information, yes or no? Is there somebody here who is on the uh, internet less than four hours a day? N am I right? You, you're less than four hours a day? Well, good for you. Good for you. Anybody else? So that means it's true. Most of you, uh, most, I said most, are, are on the internet and you're listening to information. Yes or no? Right? You, gotta, you, gotta, you have to talk. Right? What's the matter with you? you gotta, take off those face masks and say some no. <laughs> All right, so... So you, you hear what I'm saying then? You, you, you're getting all kinds of information. Now, here's the thing. Uh, follow me. You're going to believe uh, of all of that information, something is going to become your primary belief. And that's what I want you to understand. Right? Who are you, who's going to become your God? Who's going to become the, the, the person that you bow to? All right? Now, you remember... That God went and told Adam and Eve, uh, don't, don't take of the fruit. If you take of the fruit, what's going to happen? You're going to? Die. All right. And then here comes Satan. And Satan directly opposed what God said. And he said, you won't die. So who lied? Who lied? Satan, Satan right? And, and how do we know? Because we, haven't you gone to funerals already? To hospitals? Uh, haven't you seen grandparents get old and die? Or, or if they haven't died yet, they will soon, right? All of that is a consequence of what they did because they listened to Satan. Right? And so that's why God said, who told you you're naked? That means you listened to someone and you didn't believe me, but you believed them. And now the consequences, we're suffering the consequences of what they did. Right? Okay. Because they, they, they were influenced by a voice. All right. Now. Here's what I want you to understand. That, uh, oh, there's another influence I forgot to tell you about. What do you think it is? It's really big. It's, it, it, uh, you, you're willing to do things that go against your conscience because of this. What is it? Suicide. That's right. That's right. That's right. You want, don't want to be embarrassed in front of your friends, and so you're willing to even deny that you're a Christian, so they'll accept you. Right? So that's a huge influence, your friends. All right, now, here's what happens. And, and, and this has been my observation, because I've been going to church since I was uh, around seven. My parents got saved. They were older. We started going to church. So I've been attending Sandy Creek Bible Camp and, and conferences and all that all my life, right, since I was little. Right? And here's what happens. That I, I went to a church where we had 50 people in our youth group. Right? Of those 50 of my age group, right, there's only 10 maybe or less serving the Lord. Everybody else is in the world. Right? 
Now, they heard what I heard, but here's what it was. It, 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 it didn't become real to them. It was information up here. It was head knowledge, right? But, but see, that doesn't do you any good. I, I know about Christ. I know he died. I, I know what my parents told me. But, but then all of a sudden, something happens and you make a decision, I'm going to turn away from God. Or you're going to make the decision that so many of my friends did. I, I'm, I'm just going to marry her. And, and um, whether she loves God or not, she looks good to me. They get married and then 10 years later, they're divorced. Then they marry another one and they're divorced. That's what's happening to my friend, my age. And we were sitting there just like you, listening to the word of God being preached. Right, so what happens is this, that you get information up here, but unless it becomes your conviction, unless you personally have said, I, I know about Jesus, I, I know about God the Father, but I personally have, with my lips, confess that Jesus is Lord, that He is my God and my Savior, that He died on that cross, that He was buried, that He rose from the dead, and He's alive, and I bow my knees to Him, unless you do that, with conviction. It's just head knowledge. And it's only a matter of time. And you're going to walk away. But it doesn't mean you're saved. Because you know about Jesus. It means you're saved when you see your sin. And you see that he took your place on the cross. You repent. And you say Jesus you are my God and my king. I bow to you and to you alone. So the other day some friends of mine said. Hey let's go to a bar. And let's go drink some margaritas. I said no I don't think I'm going to do that. And they kept pressuring me, you know. Let's go. Why not? What's the big deal? It's just a margarita. We can have a little water down for you if you want. Well, why won't you do it? And here's what, here's what I ultimately had to say. Because my God, Jesus, doesn't want me to. And they got quiet. All right, so you, you have all these influences. You have the home. You have your church. You have your culture. You have your media. You have your friends. Right? Jesus asked the question, who do they say that I am? Who does everybody say I am? Well, he's this, he's that, he's the other thing. And then he, then he narrowed it down. Who do you say that I am? So who's Jesus to you? Is he just something that you've heard about since you were little? Oh yeah, he's there. Uh, or, or has he become your God and your Savior, your Lord, the one that you bow to and that you worship? Otherwise, it's just head knowledge. All right, now, here's what happens. There, there's what I call intellectual acceptance. Now, a lot of you in here are very intellectual, very smart. You know a lot of things. Some of you are going to be engineers, doctors, and stuff like that, right? You all are very wise. It's intellectual acceptance, right? Now, here's what happens with intellectual acceptance. That they, 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 they'll, they'll confess God. They'll go to church. They'll follow Jesus. Until, until God disappoints them. Uh, let's say that they have a baby and the baby dies. Uh, their sister dies of cancer. Their friend, uh, you know, gets hit by a car. He was only 15 years old or he was only 20, whatever age he was, right? So the, the, the fact that it was intellectual exam, uh, uh, acceptance of God and truth and they, when that disappointment comes, they start saying, well, then God is not fair. How can a loving God allow this? I don't know if I trust them or believe them anymore. So it was intellectual acceptance. It means that in their head, they believed in God. In their head, they believed in Jesus. But if Jesus disappoints them, if Jesus doesn't do what they think he should do, well, then I'm walking away because I don't want to follow that kind of God. This is a person who was in church for 40 years and even an elder. That was his conclusion. There's another guy who went to Bible college. That was his conclusion. There was, there was uh, two, two people from Emmaus Bible College where I graduated. Uh, the leaders, kids, got together and got married. And they couldn't reconcile. Um, how, how could... How could God not, not let two people who love each other come together? So what if it's two men? And they walked away. These are people with Bible degrees. They walked away from God. From now on, we reject that because 
How can a loving God not let two people love each other? And they said that they, they, they're now going to accept homosexuals. They're going to preach about it. They're going to say it's okay to be gay and be a Christian. You see, they, they believed in God as long as God did what they want. But when the disappointment came, when something clashed with what they, the culture was saying, and, and because they were listening, somebody was influencing them, right? And then the truth came out, and they walk away. I'm kind of scared that some of you have intellectual understanding of Jesus, but he's not your Lord and your God. That's what I'm scared of. That you know about him, but, but he, you don't bow to him. That he's just up here, but he's not in your heart. Then we have emotional rejection. Now, emotional rejection is this. Uh, I, I saw an elder of the church, you know, curse and, and you know, he, he did things. He's a hypocrite. And therefore, uh, everybody's hypocrites. And so I'm not going back to church because they hurt me and they walk away. That's what, what I call emotional uh, acceptance or emotional Christians. Uh, they get all excited when they sing the song. They do the, uh, they raise their hand, hallelujah. You know, but when something happens that emotionally challenges them, they, they, they get disappointed, they get hurt, and they walk away. That's emotional rejection uh, because it, it was just based on too much emotion, but they really never were born again. They, they never got to a point where I, I, I know I'm a sinner. I know Jesus is the Son of God. I know that he died. I know that he was buried. I know he rose again, and he's the only God. There is no other God. I will bow to him and to him alone uh, regardless of what happens in life. All right, so... I wonder where you're at. Have you seen your sin and that there's nothing good in you and that you need Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Have, have you seen that? And then you say, Lord, save me because I'm lost. And then you're born again and your life gets transformed and Jesus becomes your Lord. He becomes your number one influence. He becomes your number one influence. Are you there? Now, turn with me to a passage in 2 Peter. When, when am I supposed to stop? I forgot to ask. Jacob, do you, you have a time? A few more minutes? 10.30. That much? All right. All right, so, so look at 2 Peter. I want you to notice what it says. Chapter 1, and look at verse 9. All right, you got it? Second Peter 1, 9. For he who lacks these qualities, you're going to have to go back later and read yourself what the qualities are, right? Is blind or short-sighted, having forgot his purification from his former sins. Therefore, now watch this, watch this. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. Now, how do we know if someone is really born again? How do we know if someone is really born again? Because isn't it true that a, that a born again believer can sin? Yes or no? Yes. Can, can, can a born again believer Go onto the internet and see pornography. Yes. yes, he can. Do they do it? Yes, they do. All right. Can can a born again believer uh, get drunk? Yes. I was just at the hospital three days ago with a born again believer that uh, it, it might die because the liver's ruined because of drinking. All right. So can can a born again believer get divorced? Can a born again believer commit an abortion? Yeah. Yes, they can. Can a born-again believer commit suicide? I know an elder of a church in Iowa that his business went uh, sour, and he just took a shotgun and blew his head off. He was an elder of a church, a Bible teacher. So Christians can do everything a non-Christian can do, right? So what is the difference? How do we know we're saved? How do we know we're saved? The, the true believer 
uh, even though he may stumble into sin, continues to come to Jesus and say, Lord, you saved me. I, I stumbled. I failed. Uh, please help me. And you're fighting the flesh. You're fighting the sin. Even though you may do it, you repent of it. You feel terrible. And you keep trying to grow in your faith. A non-believer uh, will eventually just walk away and just give up. But a true believer will continue to fight, continue to live for Jesus, even when he stumbles and falls into sin. So you need to understand that. Because we're fighting sin. Now, if you quit fighting, well, then that's when the red flags go up. right? And so what, what he's saying here, Peter, is you better make sure you're saved. You better make sure you're saved, that you're growing in your faith. Even though you may stumble at times, or a lot of times, or be struggling with some vice, some sin, as long as you're fighting and you're repenting and seeking God and asking Him to help you have victory, then that's good. But if you stop the fight, then something's wrong. Now, go to Revelation 21. And look at verse 7 and 8. He who overcomes shall inherit these things. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. The true believer overcomes. That is, the true believer keeps fighting, keeps living for God, uh, keeps resisting the flesh, uh, keeps growing in the faith. At the end of the day, the true believer did not deny Jesus Christ. And the fake one will eventually, sooner or later, when you know problems come, disappointments and all that, will say, you know what, uh, I'm walking away. And the reason they walk away is because they never had it. it they were never really saved. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, have you been born again? Have you been born again? H have you said, Jesus, there's no other God. You are the only one. You see, the other day I was witnessing to a person, and the person says, oh, yes, I believe that. I believe that Jesus is the is, is uh, the Christ. I believe he died for our sins in the cross. I believe all that. Then I go to their house and there's a statue in the house of some virgin thing, some one of those, uh, you know, I don't know which one it was. They, they, they worship all kinds of virgins. And I said, um, you said that Jesus was the only Lord. Why, why do you have that right there? See, what you're telling me is that you have two gods. That yes, you believe in Jesus, but you also pray to this thing. Something's not matching up. Something's not matching up. Okay? So, the one who overcomes, the one who consistently, into the day you die, that's why Paul said, I have kept the faith when he was going to die. That's the true believer. That's a true believer that continues uh, to follow the Lord. Okay, now, look what the Bible says. He's going to give you a list of those who will not be in heaven. I want you to pay attention, right? And I'm going to close out with this. Verse 8, Revelation 21, 8. But the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the immoral persons and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So what is he saying? Here's the person who, who is not saved, all right? So I want you to listen. Number one, you get the coward. What is a coward? The coward is someone that will not confess Jesus in front of the friends. Are, are, are you a Christian? Well, I go to church. What do you believe? So here's what Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32. Just listen. Everyone, therefore, who shall confess me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. All right, so the Bible says clearly, the coward, the person who did not, uh, who, who did not confess Jesus, that denied him, were too embarrassed, you're a coward, you're too afraid to, to say that Jesus is your Lord, you're a coward. That person who, who does not confess Jesus on earth, when you get to heaven, he's not going to confess you. You, you, you don't just go to heaven. You have to be born again. You have to be transformed. And you have to be brave. 
and, and not a coward and say, I am a believer and I'm living for him. This is my confession. You have to say it. You have to say it publicly and a coward will not go to heaven. Next, the unbelieving. This is a person who hears the gospel, who grew up in church, but never really believes it, never really is born again. So they're just basically a non-believer. I just, I just don't believe it. I've heard it all my life. I know about it. And they don't believe it. They're not really saved. Next, the abominable. What is an abominable? It's someone who, who laughs at, at um, the, the worship services, going to church. They, they mock at it. I had a cousin, well, several cousins, that would go to church. They would walk up to the front. They would take the, the little uh, cracker and the cup and then walk out. They would come drunk. They'd just walk in there. Of course, it wasn't our kind of assembly. Right? It was a Catholic church. So that's where we grew up. They would just walk in there, drunk, take it, walk out, and laugh, and go back to their sin. See, that's somebody who's an abominable person. They, they laugh. They laugh at everything. They laugh at church. They, they laugh about God. They laugh about the Bible. They laugh about holiness. Then you got a murderer. You know what a murderer is. Somebody who kills somebody. All right, then you got immoral. A moral person includes adultery, fornication, all kinds of sexual evil. Someone who, who doesn't want to come to Christ because of that. I had several uncles who were telling me, I gave him the gospel. My mom did too. We, we gave him the gospel. Like, I don't want to come to Christ because then I had to give up my women and my drinking. And you know that they all died last year, three of them? And they went, all went right to hell because they were denying Christ because they didn't want to give up their drinking and their stuff. And so... That's immoral people. Then you have sorcerers, people who do witchcraft. And that includes drugs, drug takers. They want to do drugs and, 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 and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's what a sorcerer is, a witchcraft and drugs are always involved in that. Then you have idolaters. They worship idols instead of the living God. Then you have liars. What's a liar? A liar is someone who, who denies Jesus as the only truth, the only way. I am, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father but to me. Anybody who does not preach that, who does not say that, is a liar. And so liars who deny Jesus uh, will not go to heaven. Satan is a liar, and all liars belong to him. They lie about sin. They, they lie about the need of God, about the need of salvation. As long as you don't embrace truth, Satan's okay with you. And so Jesus called him the father of all lies. And nothing unclean, 21, 27. Only absolute purity gets into heaven, not a hint of sin. So how can you and I, as, as sinners, uh, enter heaven, heaven then when only pure, clean people can go in there because of the blood of Jesus? When I turn to him for salvation, he gives me his righteousness, he cleanses me, and then I can enter heaven. I can enter heaven. Outside of heaven are the... This is what it says in 22.15. The dogs and the sorcerers, the immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and all who love and practice lies. All right, so let me ask you a question. You hear all kinds of influences. You're in the Internet. You've heard your parents. You've heard the preacher. Uh, you've heard your friends. So who, who have you believed? Who have you believed of all of these influences? Who is your God? Who are you bowing to? Either you're bowing to God and, and to His Son, Jesus Christ, and He's your Lord, or you're listening to someone else, to another voice, and that becomes your God. And you need to make that decision now, young people, that today I want to bow my knee and I want to turn to Jesus so that He can be my Lord and Savior, and I want to confess it with my mouth. I'm not going to cover it up or hide it. I'm going to have a clear testimony that I was lost in sin. Christ saved me, and now I'm living for Him. None, none of this, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, and you're just wallowing in sin and doing whatever you want. You're not saved then. Don't fool yourself. It's just head knowledge that that's what you're doing. A true born-again person is transformed and changed by Jesus Christ, and you start to follow Him. So who's your God? Is it Jesus Christ? If it is, you need to say it with your mouth. 
You need to say it by being baptized after you're saved and saying with your mouth publicly, I want to tell everybody that Jesus is my Lord and I bow to him and we baptize you as you give that testimony. So have you turned to Jesus for the salvation of your soul? I'm not talking about do you know about him in your head. I mean, have you turned to him and said, Lord, I am lost and I need to be saved and I want to follow you. I want you to be my Lord and my God. And once I'm saved, I'm going to give testimony by being baptized and telling everyone that I belong to Jesus. Have you done that? Have you turned to him? I hope so. I hope you don't walk out with just head knowledge. Because young people, when you die, you will go to hell. That doesn't save you. What saves you is repenting of your sin and turning to Jesus and crying out to him, Lord, have mercy on my soul. And when he gets a hold of you, then you start to testify. He's my Lord and he's my God. And you live for him. I know I'm a little rough on you today, but you needed to hear this. You need to hear this. Have you been born again? Maybe today, maybe right now, you can turn to the Lord and, and, and be saved. And that's my prayer. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close out with just one, one passage in, in Hebrews chapter 10. And, and just to show you how the Bible does teach this consistently. Hebrews 10. And look at... Um, where do I want to start? Um, yeah, let's start with verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Now, you remember that Hebrews was written to people who had, who had said they were saved. They said they were Christians. But when trouble started coming, they started saying, well, maybe we should go back to our old religion where we were before. So in other words, they were wanting to go back. They weren't going to walk away from the Lord Jesus. And this is the exhortation. For you have need of endurance, verse 36, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, and he who is coming will come and will not delay. That is Jesus returning, right? The, sec the, the rapture, he's going to rapture us and he's going to come. Look at 38. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, that is if he, if he gets to a point where he denies the faith, my soul has no pleasure in him. That's God speaking. Now look, but we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the persevering of the soul. So you see what he's saying? Same thing I'm telling you. He's saying, okay, uh, are you going to get to the point where you're going to walk away from the faith then? Then God is not going to be pleased with you because you have turned away. But, but we are those who persevere. That is, we keep on professing Christ. In spite of the problems, of the persecution, of everything that happens, we keep on professing Christ. And that's what pleases God, because that's a true believer. That's a true believer. All right? So let, let's bow our heads for a minute. Let's bow our heads. And I, I want everybody to have their eyes closed. I don't want anybody looking, please. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, may, maybe today's the day you can say, Lord, I'm not saved. I've heard about you. I know about you. It's head knowledge, but I've never been born again. I have never turned to you for the salvation of my soul. So, so right now, just in your heart, pray to him and say, Lord, Save me. I'm lost. I, I believe you. I believe you died in that cross. I believe you were buried. I believe you were raised again on the third day and that you're in heaven right now. And, and I want you to be my God. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I want to profess you. I want to confess you with my mouth. I want you to save me. Turn to him if you haven't. Right now, say, Lord, save me. I want to be born again. I want to be saved. Do so in Jesus' name. Amen.